Welcome back to the Dropping in Surf Show. My name is Rob Case, Paddling Technique Coach. I was reading up on surfboard building principles, and I came across a book over and over again that was referenced. The book had to do with designing boats, not surfboards. I was curious to see how many similarities there might be between boat and surfboard design. So, I asked a veteran ship designer to sit down with me and discuss surfboards, ship design, and more. Mark Bitzo spent 39 professional years designing some of the largest ships in the world. He's an avid sailor, water skier, and loves the water. He's in good company. We recorded this conversation in Belmar and Keys, California on Friday, April 16th, 2021. Please enjoy my conversation with Mark. I don't think you know this, but you were a bit of an inspiration to me for wave riding. In wave riding? You mean like behind your boat? No, 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 no. You no, mean this surfing? Was, this was actually ocean surfing. So really? Do you remember a camp trip that we went on that you guys invited me? It was a family camp trip down to Manresa? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I do. Okay, so I don't know. How, do you remember how old we were? It was like 12? Was that was that over 4th of July when... Oh, I, gosh. I yeah, don't yeah. I don't remember. Ah, yeah, somewhere around 12, okay. probably. So, yeah. So, Scotty yeah. and I were like playing on the beach, like f playing the wave chase thing. And all of a sudden, you roll up in like your your swimsuit. And you're like, I'm going to go catch some waves. And we were like, what? Because <laughs> uh, to us, there was no... there was You couldn't get out. Like, it was just white water everywhere. And it was huge. And so you proceed to swim out and just disappear and we're like where'd he go and then all of a sudden you like are traversing the wave on your on your body on the side and i was like because oh. like to that point <laughs> chip and i my brother and i only surf straight on mm -hmm. on waves you know like mm -hmm. when we surf, just in the white water yeah you know, straight and you're yep, like straight in traversing it and i was like oh, mind blown <laughs> it was insane so ever ah. since then that was what inspired me so I've well i had no idea <laughs> but i've always loved the water so yeah yeah I, yes okay good well i'm yeah. glad you love the water too yes absolutely uh, yeah i have you to thank uh for for this partially so anyway i'm blown away are you I ready no clue i'm ready okay so i have some technical questions here and then we can just kind of play it off of that yeah um so you you were building ships or designing ships for i would say 40 years or so right 39 years 39 yeah. years professionally yeah. but probably a few years before that too yeah. sort of kind of yeah <laughs> a few a few jobs before that so yeah. just uh maybe give the audience an idea of how small a ship and how large a ship what was the smallest and what was the largest yeah the sm designed? smallest ones i did were some barges uh some in africa and sudan yeah. and some small tugboats Bar barges about 100 feet long or 120 feet long and tugboats the smallest maybe 50 60 feet long do you remember what the beam on those were mm, the beam on the on the barge is maybe 20 feet or something like okay. that uh, and then we did a barge in in louisiana is 180 feet long and about maybe 35 feet wide something like that yeah and then how about and the then barges? the ships uh, yeah. did a lot lot of ships tankers yeah almost all tankers oil tankers or uh, lng carriers gas gas ships uh -huh. uh, the largest ship so I went on were uh, 1,500 feet long. These are, these are kind of like ultra large crude carriers. These are like not bigger than super tankers. Yeah. So, but the concept's all the same. And so we did small ships. Product, you know, product carriers carry gasoline stuff like that, as yeah. well as crude oil, and then like it's an LNG stuff like that. It was really fun. So the small like, ship and the large ship, like in terms of design you're still focused on the same main goals exactly the same procedures and the uh, and the thing i mean everything is really the same it's it's just kind of the uh, the physics of it is is identical it's just the size is size is different and is it just mathematically like multiplied it multiplied? is mathematically multiplied okay yeah 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 and there's different constraints because when you get the the problem with the really big ships is that they're too deep in the water to go anywhere except out in the ocean. They can't get to any into any ports. Right. So they have to to more offshore and then use small ships to bring cargo ashore or something like that. So you get constraints that way, mm -hmm. uh, physical constraints. But the 
you know, you could build it anything you want. Like this ship that was down in the Suez Canal. Yeah. That was that was a ship of the same similar size, about fifteen hundred feet long, something like that. Yeah. Enormous ships. Yeah. And you, I mean, shipyards these days have the technology to do that kind of thing. And right. They're, they're enormous. So when you're designing something like like one of the large ships, what's kind of like the main focus or goal of the design? Like well, I was in the oil and gas business, so the, f the primary focus was was uh, containment. You know, yeah. the, s the safety aspects, especially with gas, but also the pollution, oil pollution and doing as much as possible that you can do to keep the oil and gas in the ship, right. no matter what happens. So we did, you know, scenarios of collisions and groundings and all sorts of scenarios like that right. would have to be run to try to absolutely minimize the chance of an escape of the That cargo. reminds me of like the egg drop physics project. There you go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Much. Yeah, right. yeah, exactly. I mean, and the ships are pretty, you know, if you were to pick up one of these ships in the middle, it would just break in half. They're really not. Really? I mean, because they are so huge. Yeah. And they're supported by the buoyancy, like when you're surfing, it's yeah. the buoyancy that's holding you up. Yeah. But it's spread out over the whole length, so a ship is built to expect that. Yeah. But if you were just to pick it up in the middle, it'd break in half, most wow. of the big ones, especially the big ones. Yeah. So, your safeties, uh, safety and containment are one and two, and then, I mean, that you still needed to build design like you can't you just yeah, burn so gas all the time like well, you need to yeah i mean the the ships have a mission and so the mission is to carry whatever from one place to the other so yeah. you have all those you know the the business objectives that you have to meet it has to go in certain locations it has to be as fuel efficient as possible yeah. uh, and then uh, you know as quick a turnaround as possible and you want it to go fast as possible usually right so uh, it's and then you want it to build uh, build it at a reasonable price too so yeah it's the, so econ you, the economics and yeah. the and the, the operational objectives kind of are kind of set. always there they're always there yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so the whole slew we, we talk about the design spiral and it's kind of like with surfboards i mean you have an idea you, you circle in on it and you, you refine it a little bit more and you refine it a little bit more and eventually you get there, but you start out with the objectives yeah. and then you, you get there. Yeah. So like when someone's building a surfboard, which I've never done, but I, I expect they do the same thing. Yeah. You know, different way to make it or different design and skegs and so forth. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you know, speaking of about drag, I think we were mentioning it before, what sort of drag was experienced? Uh, like do these ships experience? What types of drag? Yeah, the drag, well, the drag, uh, okay, so there's really kind of three kinds of drag when you're doing the hydrodynamics of a ship or even a surfboard or a mm -hmm. surfer. There's the frictional drag, that's one. And then there's... And that's right up against the surface of the vessel? Frictional drag, uh, and there's model tests that we do with ships, I don't know if Surfboards have been tested, but um, friction. There's there's three parts to the drag. The frictional drag. If you had a flat plate mm -hmm. and you pulled it underwater, deep underwater, so there's no waves, it would be how much drag you would get, and it's proportional to the surface area. You can okay. just imagine a flat. You can drag in a piece of plywood or something yeah. straight in. Then there's form drag, which has to do with the shape. So if, now, if you add some shape to that, that piece of plywood instead of a piece of plywood you're dragging a ball or something like that that ball has got a lot smaller surface area but it's got more form drag because the water is kind of turbulent around it right and then there's wave drag and the wave drag is the waves any waves you see on the surface of the water whether it's from the ship or a surfer or whatever that's wasted energy that is that is a form of drag mm -hmm. which is really important yeah so you try to minimize you know you you do all the engineering to try to minimize what the are, drag. What are the solutions to some of those? Well, you, like, you like the surface, uh, the surface frictional drag, you want to minimize the surface area. Yeah. And that's about all you can do. So Form with a ship, drag, you can't with a 1,500 foot ship. You're going to have a lot of surface area <laughs> on a 1,500 foot ship, a lot. And, and that's going to be too. there yeah. for sure. There's nothing you can do about it. 
And Does it help like to scrape barnacles off of oh, the hole? Oh, absolutely. The surf, right? Yeah. Yes. So, so, so the right. frictional yeah. resistance is 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 very much impacted by the smoothness of the surface. Yeah. And uh, and so yeah. So but yeah. so I have, I have a question about this because this guy's asked all the time to me is is well how like how long in duration or in distance does frictional drag and inefficiency like barnacles we'll just use barnacles how how long does it have in duration will that ship need to go with barnacles for it to have an impact like a, a significant impact on on its efficiency well like, uh like when you first put a ship in the water new paint it'll go uh, i mean a good anti-fouling paint will last you several years yeah. but if you have barnacles and stuff on it immediately I mean it is it is an immediate drag on the ship yeah so it will go slower or you'll burn more fuel and, and turn up the rpms on the engine higher to get the same speed right. one so way or the other you're more. gonna you're gonna suffer so yeah. I've, I've the question the way the question asks to me is oh I have wax on the bo bottom of my board which is not the yeah. same wax for a snowboard or ski wax but right you know the traction wax and I'm like at the speeds we're paddling we're paddling three miles an hour yeah it's not gonna make that big of a not difference, much difference right not unless much you have difference. like chunks well as you know I used to do a lot of yacht racing sailboat racing yeah. and there was all these debates what kind of wax do you use and and all that yeah. and for a sailboat yeah you know you're really pushing it and uh, trying to get as much as you can it might make a little bit of difference some people say even a wet sanded surface is better than a wax surface uh, so the, the differences are so at that point so minuscule yeah uh, in the case of a surfboard I don't think you'd see much right. difference yeah. so and, and that's that's how I explained to them and I say you, you hear a lot about frictional drag with swimmers because yeah. the difference between gold and silver is Darn. a yep. hundredth of a second exactly and so that yeah. does make a difference but and then yeah. On the opposite end, you know, when you're dealing with hundreds of a second, it would make a difference. And then on your ships, over, you know, thousands of nautical miles, it, it will makes make a, a difference. difference. Yeah. Absolutely makes a difference. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting subject. And of course, the swimmers, you know, they've tried these suits of different materials, yeah. which is more like the surface of a, a dolphin or a shark or something. Yeah. And uh, and that's an interesting idea. Maybe it's better. I'm I'm not sure. Yeah. Case of surfing, I'm not sure. You know, as long as it's smooth. Yeah, you'd be okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what about form drag? How do you form solve drag, form yeah. drag? So form drag, uh, like on a ship, like the way I like like to think of it is, uh, if you look at the shape of a shark or a dolphin, it's kind of a bluntish nose, mm -hmm. smooth, streamlined body, and the tail is very sharp, mm -hmm. and that's that's to minimize form drag. Okay. And the same as an airplane, you'll have a blunt nose, but a very fine tail. Yeah. Because if you have much uh, shape at the back end where the water is leaving the side of the, of the surfboard or the, the, the ship or whatever, you get a lot of turbulence and that's a lot of form drag. Right. So form drag is important. That's why airplane wings, they have these airfoil shapes. They're very highly tested to get the most efficiency and they're very smooth from an airflow standpoint. Right. Same thing with ships. You try to have very fine lines aft. You have a blunt bow because it doesn't really hurt you to have a fairly blunt bow. Yeah. And then you, you go, you know, very fine aft, uh, lines aft. Yeah. In the case of a surfboard, it's kind of interesting, and, uh, and with yachting, and you, you and I used to sail lasers, mm -hmm. and an important point of the lasers, which I learned, is you don't put the transom deep in the water ever, because that the water comes up, curls up behind, and it's very slow. You've got yeah, it's to really adjust. wide in the back. It's wide, and it's got a flat transom, so yeah. you, you don't want to drag the stern but you may want your weight aft if you're planing and going really fast. Uh -huh. But when you're not going fast, you don't. You want a very smooth exit. That's, yeah. There's a lot of form drag effect there. In the case of the ships, like I say, we'd have very fine lines aft for that reason. Yeah, I think if if you looked at one of these tankers, you'd be like, oh, this is really fat in the front, really fat in the back. You wouldn't see the little things you're talking about. But if you if you looked, if you looked took at a it, drone and you might be able to see it. If you looked underwater, you would see it. 
Ah, yeah, so it's all so underwater. You, it's all underwater, right? Yeah. So if you were if you were looking up underwater of these, yeah. you would see a very fine line aft. And this container ships, all ships are that way because yeah. it makes such a big difference. Interesting. And I've thought about you know how it's probably important in surfing, but I don't really know. But you know, if you were dragging your rear end, the rear end of the board, and trying to get going, yeah, uh, that's probably a lot of form drag there. Yeah. You may, uh, and you're the expert, it but is. you know, so, so it's that, that weight distribution. If you're trying to get some speed up mm -hmm. and you're going along this way through the water, yeah. that's probably not going to be working so good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's actually step number one in my eight step checklist oh, that okay. I teach. It's yeah. horizontal balance. And, there you go. And, and we talk a lot about form drag. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's yeah. interesting because there's a difference between the different types of boards you ride as well. So if you're on the big long board where mm -hmm. your body's actually out of the water, it's it's not a part of the vessel, quote unquote. Yeah. Um, it, it's the, this type of form drag that we're talking about affects that as well, but more so when you're on a short board and you're submerged with the Absolutely. board. Absolutely. A short so board, I can imagine, being more of a problem. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so what kind of propulsion? Oh, oh. The, the wave last, drag? Did um, you want to talk about wave Sorry, drag? the last type of drag was wave drag. Right. So what were the solutions for that? Wave drag is very interesting. And uh, well, you've probably seen bulbous bows on ships. I have, yes, okay. but you're so, going to have to explain it. So okay, so wave drag, again, any, w any waves made is your kind of enemy from the standpoint of drag. You, you want to minimize waves. So a ship, maybe a surfboard, I guess the same, you would have, if you get paddling along, yeah. you're going to have a wave at the front, uh -huh. and it's going to, the wave is going to kind of go up at the bow, the front, and then down and up at the back. Uh -huh. So those waves, and if you just push along like that, and like in your ski boat before you get planing, you'll yeah. see those waves come off the bow, and off the stern. Uh, that's wave drag. In the case of a ship, a lot of times they kind of counteract that bow wave by putting a bulb right in the bow. Uh -huh. And you can visualize the ship, there's going to be a bow wave that kind of comes up like this yeah. as it's going along. Well, if you took a ball, just a, a tennis ball, and pulled it underneath the water, just under the surface, yeah. there would be, the water would drip, dip down right yeah. behind the ball. Uh -huh. So if you put that ball on the front of the ship so that the dip of the ball wave counteracts the, the the crest of the of the bow wave yeah you just eliminate the bow wave out. it yeah. cancels them out yeah does so it that's shift the, the idea does it shift the wave back on the ship it just no. completely cancels it well it it, it reduces it yeah. it doesn't completely cancel but it reduces yeah. it so that's the idea and it really works so yeah i think of um it really works to maybe clarify uh, visually is i think of a sine wave yeah and then another sine wave maybe in front of it and when you can have the trough of one and the crest of the other, that's going to cancel each other out. Yeah. Is that kind of what's happening? That's exactly what's happening, okay. yeah. So that's what happens actually as waves come into the beach as well. Sometimes they yeah. they cancel and sometimes they amplify as oh, well. Yeah. And some, yeah, you know, yeah. when, they, when they overlap in both, both uh, crests, they yeah. amplify or they yeah. cancel out a trough and a crest. Well, you, you've probably heard of these sneaker waves. Yeah. You, you've seen sneaker waves. Yeah, yeah. And in my... What I, my, what I used to do was work on some offshore platforms too. And some, when sometimes you get these combinations of waves yeah. that will get so large, like 50, 60, 70, maybe even 80 oh, feet geez. tall, if they combine right underneath an offshore platform yeah. or right where your ship is, it can be a big problem. Oh, yeah. How involved. tall are the platforms? Hmm? How tall are the platforms? 80 feet. Yeah. So it's coming up to the, yeah, yeah, yeah. To the main layer. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah. So it's. So that with uh, surf, surfing and the, the wave uh, drag, um, I guess the other thing to keep in mind is, is the sh there's a speed that you, you can't exceed when you're just sitting in the water without planing on top of the water. And that speed is limited by the distance from the, the wave length from the bow to the stern or the front of the surfboard to the back of the surfboard. Mm -hmm. You can't go any faster than that if you're in that trough. 
and the wave, the, uh, the hydrodynamics of the water surface limits that speed based on the length. The longer it is, the faster you can go. Right. Longer board probably should be able to go faster. Maybe you've noticed, I don't know. But you can paddle faster before you kind of get stuck in that or you, before you have to climb up and over top right. of, the, of the water. Yeah, that's a, my fourth step. It's called ah. lengthen the vessel. It's based off of William Froude's uh, equation. Yep. And so you're right yep. that longer, longer, uh, longer, longer surfboards do go faster. Yeah. Um, but that's the best explanation for that whole speed. Is that what it's called, right? It's Maximum whole speed. Whole speed. Yep. Um, yeah. To go faster than whole speed, you've got to climb you over have to that climb bow wave. The, the the front part of the sine wave. Yep. And plane. Yep. And that it takes a lot requires of Requires a certain speed to get to based on the design of the vessel, right? Yeah. It requires a lot more energy yeah. a lot more power to get there in yeah. the case of a ski boat you just give it you gun it yeah case of a ship you never go that fast right case of a surfboard you're getting pushed from the wave right the the, the ocean wave to get one of the things i cover in level two is that you can't actually paddle fast enough to catch up to a wave if you're just in flat water mm -hmm. just paddling because you know yeah. three and a half four miles an hour you're not going to get to planing and you're not going to be able to sustain it no so you're saying those large ships never get to planing because there's is it because they're so heavy because they're so big the amount of power would be required <laughs> <laughs> but but the 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 ships are so long that 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 isn't usually a problem okay. i mean the, the tugboats it's a problem you know if you see a tugboat yeah they're pull, really plowing they're really pushing they're it as pushing. fast as they can yeah. and they've got a ton of power yeah they can't get they can't plane Huh. You know, but and you see that big wave that they're stuck in. They're sunk right in this wave, and they right. actually sink down in the water as that goes on. Yeah. And so when you when you are paddling, you're actually kind of going to reduce yourself down in between. Yeah. And that tugboat, there's no way. It's just so, so much power. Man, if that tugboat had a personality, he'd be so frustrated. <laughs> He's so frustrated. Like, why can't I get up this? Yeah, thing? yeah. It's kind of odd. You would think because because they're built for power, and some right. of them I've been in a lot of tugs, and they have a lot of power, but there's just it takes so much power to get yeah. get up on top of the well, wave. Well, that bow wave, um, I think conceptually it's difficult when you first hear about it. And then once you start seeing illustrations of it, you're like, oh, that makes total sense. Yeah, you know, if you know what that. to look for. And and a really good um, visual of that is just, just to look at a tugboat as it's going through the water. You'll see it's just sunk right in between the bow wave here, stern wave here. Yeah. The ships, ships, the waves are the ships are usually so long you don't really get that clean a visual yeah. of. But I would imagine now. Can you feel that in the surfboard? Can you? Oh yeah, actually when we paddle, you um, kind of get stuck in as far as you're trying to paddle harder. Yeah, and harder. so if, if you <coughs> were on a shortboard primarily because you're submerged with it, you're a yep. part of that water line. Um, mm -hmm. And so when you do get up to what you think is your maximum speed, you're just stuck there. You're without the power of the wave, as you said earlier, mm -hmm. without the the power and the energy and gravity, yep. you're never going to get to planing no. and, and get out of that hole. No. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah, and yeah. so th that's that's why it's one of my major steps. Um, mm -hmm. And even for longboards, the longboard is longer than than we can artificially lengthen the vessel. We use our arms to lengthen the vessel and try and break that mm -hmm. wave drag. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. With the longboard, it's longer than you can reach. So, for a lot of a lot of people, for there, it's to not get in the way of the water line. Like so, mm -hmm. if you, in that instance, every time you enter your arm, you're adding drag. Mm -hmm. And so you're slowing yourself mm -hmm. down, but you have to enter in order to provide propulsion. So you just want to zip it down as fast as you can. Yeah. And push them through and then yeah, glide. Yeah, yeah. How, and about, so how about the, the uh, smoothness of getting your arms in and out so you don't disturb yeah. the water very much? Because any disturbing of the water is is lost energy, right? Yeah, it's a waste. It's a waste of I don't know. biomechanical movement, too. I don't know how you too. do that surfing. But yeah. yeah, no, so my I always, <coughs> I always joke with people. I am said... You have you have to add drag, right? But as long as the drag is the propulsion or the efficiency you get from that adding mm -hmm. that drag is mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. than the drag, then go ahead and add it. And yeah. if not, yeah. Yeah. then it's kind of a waste. Yeah. You're just slowing yourself down, yeah. and making it harder for you. Yeah. <laughs> but and you're and you're using more energy, which Absolutely. gets me to my next question, which is, what kind of propulsion is used on these ships? Like. It must be an amazing amount of energy, and yeah. wh what is actually pushing it? Is it jets? Is it propellers? Like, what works well for these massive ships? Are ships? Uh, large ships are all propellers. Okay. And How many blades on those? Uh, usually 
four, five, six, something and like that. And it depends. The They're enormous. Well, the, the, if you look at the efficiency of a propeller, the larger the diameter, the better. So, okay. so the, the the diameter is really set by the draft, how deep the ship can be can go you, because of the draft restrictions, and you don't want the propeller hanging below the bottom of the ship. And then the water line when the ship is unloaded, you don't want it splashing. <laughs> right. it doesn't do when any it doesn't good without the water. It, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. And so the propellers, the own large ships, the propellers, which is pretty interesting, are very slow turning. You can, you can count. It c maybe 60 uh, revolutions per minute 60 wow. rpm that's one a I second did not think you can that that you can watch case. it go all the way around because that's the most efficient propeller you can have is as slow as slow as possible and as big as you could fit in that right. area you have to go oh, it reminds me of like a wind turbine yeah you, you look at those and they're, they you look like they're barely moving yeah yeah but uh, smaller the ship you need to go faster to get the amount of power so you'll see them spinning faster uh, but then the drive shaft, and sometimes you more have more than one screw, but uh, the drive shaft is driven by old time, well, 30, 40 years ago, there were mostly steam engines, steam uh -huh. turbines. Now they're diesel engines, almost all diesel, all right. diesel driven. Uh, sometimes there's still steam if you're using uh, LNG for fuel or something like that. You can use a boiler and just burn it. Right. But diesel diesel almost always and sometimes you know tugboats they'll have these uh, these uh, voice Snyder propellers which are a series of vertical blades in a circle and they in a, on a turntable and they turn this whole thing spins and the blades adjust as it goes around oh wow and so the advantage of that is you can dial in thrust in any direction you want you right. just tell it and those blades will adjust to make you go the direction is you that want. what they're Pretty using cool. in North Sea because they can. In the North Sea, it's so <coughs> rough. Yeah, those the those kind are probably more like uh, harbor tugs. But, okay. But but those the, still the most common in the tugs are are big. Uh, they're Z drives, so that it's a propeller in a nozzle, and it's steerable, and it's underneath underneath the the work boat or the tug boat, uh -huh. and those you can spin 360 degrees too. In and they, in, in one place. Yeah, so you have a vertical shaft going yeah. down, and then it, there's a nozzle, yeah. and then the propeller in the nozzle, and the whole thing is hung underneath the, the boat, and wow. then you can you can s direct the thrust any way you want. Right. Pretty good. Yeah. They're, they're, they're is that the only thing that they would have on a tug, for example? You can have, have you can have conventional propellers too, depending on the kind of service. If it's yeah. like offshore, a really big boat, and you need a lot of power, and you're just going to go, as opposed to a work boat in a in a bay like San Francisco Bay, you'd want to be able to steer ships and come up against ships. Right. It's better to have something that's really steerable for your thrust. Right. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, no jet propulsion. No jet propulsion. <laughs> <laughs> Those jet skis go real fast. Jets, though. well, you know, it works good for small boats. So yeah. They can, they can Is there make just a work. maximum weight that they can push, or has that ever been uh, explored? I'm sure it's been looked at. I don't know why it doesn't work out for big ships. Mm. You might, <laughs> you might wash out your neighbor with. Your <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to have <laughs> if one you had big a big, enough, big, because yeah. you're talking, you know, a yeah, big it's ship. Have to be massive. Big ship could be. 30, 40,000 horsepower, you know, oh. so yeah, you would wash out your, your neighbor, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah, no. So if, if you wanted to make a ship go faster, would it be better to put a bigger engine in it or cut down the drag? Well, if, if, you're, if your business case is to move, say, say 20,000 containers like this, these big ships. Yeah. So you know what you have to move, and that, that tells you really the size of the vessel you want. Uh -huh. And then the speed is going to be determined by how much power you put in it. Okay. So the more power you put, so that basically is the, the answer is you just have to put in more power if you want to go, go, go fast. faster. The problem becomes, the, the answer becomes pretty clear f quickly because the power goes up, if it's just frictional drag, you're talking about by the square of the speed. Mm -hmm. So if you double the speed, the power goes up four times. 
But the wave making drag goes up a lot faster than that. I've heard eight times. It can be. It depends <laughs> on what you're doing. Yeah. So, so you you're not going to get a whole lot you know, more speed before you end up with a problem with not enough power. You can't get enough power. Your fuel consumption is going to be crazy yeah. high, and your expenses are going to be too high. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you know what's crazy though? Surfers think that they can paddle faster if they just got stronger. Uh, I it argue, might be like the tugboat. <coughs> you I might just sit, sink. You're just sit. Yeah. You might just sink deeper in the water. Yeah. In the, I argue the, that it's better to yeah. cut down drag first, yeah. and then add your effective propulsion in. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. Is, yeah. Um, it's it's yeah. funny. A lot of experienced surfers they're like, "Oh, I just need to get in paddle shape." And I'm like, eh. <coughs> "If you just mm -hmm. were a little bit more streamlined, you'd, you'd, you'd cruise through the water a lot easier." Mm -hmm. is my mm -hmm. so if you're smart to reduce the drag as much as you can, as much as you can. So you were thinking. That's already been reduced as much as it, because you immediately went to, well, if you're moving containers, I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> if, you're, if your parameter is limited to that, yeah. yeah. But if you wanted to go faster, you'd, you'd streamline that form. Yeah, right? well, you can try, but that's going to reduce your carrying capacity. Exactly. So you're yeah. still focused <laughs> on the carrying capacity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Well, and I used to do tankers a yeah. lot, of, and tankers are like, floating boxes I mean they're not very yeah. streamlined because they're they're carrying something so heavy yeah. and to, to carry that much weight Spread you need out. buoyancy the yeah. only way to get buoyancy is to make a big underwater box yeah. you, know, you have to have a lot of underwater volume to make the buoyancy nice. buoyancy Archimedes made, principle you know Archimedes <laughs> Archimedes says yeah the buoyancy is equal to the displaced volume whatever you water yeah. you push aside that's how much buoyancy you get yeah. yeah yeah smart guy do you think that story was true that he was in his bathtub and then he said eureka and he jumps out and he's naked running down the street <laughs> i doubt it seriously <laughs> it's a fun story though <laughs> i doubt it that's like the better part of the story I, right? I, I, uh, I don't know but that's a pretty interesting concept it's not intuitively obvious at least to me it wasn't that, no you know yeah yeah. But, wow, it makes th things very straightforward to figure out. Yeah. Um, so when, when, surfboard, when surfers were in the 50s and 60s, um, the, a lot of them were shaping their own surfboards. And there was a book called, uh, let me get this right, Na Naval Architecture of Planing Holds, Holes by Lindsay Lord. Do you know that book? by chance I don't know it but I think I've heard the name yeah yeah so that was that was like considered their Bible and actually I would argue that some shapers today there's a subset of surfboard called the whole the planing whole board mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. still like look to that book mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so they, they kind of use boat building principles to enhance the performance of their surfboards sure have you looked to <clears throat> other areas or your profession looked to other areas for inspiration outside of shipbuilding? Because shipbuilding kind of goes way back. Yeah, uh, probably the biggest area of inspiration comes from aeronautics. Oh, really? Yeah, because the if you dynamics. think about, yeah, it's just yeah. fluid dynamics and whether the fluid is air or the fluid is water, uh, the principles are exactly the same. Right. And so, uh, and so the model testing kind of work that goes on for shipbuilding is same exact as as for airplanes, yeah. and the same kind of mm, thinking goes on in shaping the plane as the ship. Again, the air, the smooth, uh, the, the very clean at exit areas of the of the right. wings and the hull, and maybe the the. Uh, the surface friction studies have been done on so many shapes of things going through, whether it's air or water. They have books of you know drag coefficients for yeah. different shapes. And what if you make this change to the shape? What does it do to the drag or the lift coefficients if you want wings? So uh, yeah, aeronautics. Is so did you did you ever go into a wind tunnel and test the design, or because they have such a history in shipbuilding, you didn't have to? No, I did some. Uh, well, I went to UC Berkeley, and they had a towing tank there. So we to tested some ship models there in the towing tank uh, over at Berkeley. In water. In water. Yeah. Not in a wind. But tunnel. not in, no, not in a, 
a wind tunnel. Yeah. And what about more recently with, um, was it CFD technology, computational mm -hmm. fluid dynamics? You ever yep. use that? Yep. Well, yeah. I mean, the company, we would subcontract that. We didn't do it yeah. ourselves, but yeah. You get the results and yeah. see different shapes right. and stuff. Right, right, right. Would right. you do that every time or, or because you, you didn't really have to reinvent the wheel all the time? No, I mean, the, uh, when the ships are built, people that buy the ships, like we used to do, and then operate the ships, we weren't hyper smart with respect to the engineering and the design because the, that would be delegated to the ship builder. Yeah. And the ship builders would compete against each other. So the competition's there. Well, uh, you know, this ship, ship builder can build a ship that's two tenths of a knot faster than this one. Well, I'm probably going to go here, yeah. most likely. <laughs> Even though it's only two tenths of a knot, it makes a big difference. So, so they're very, very competitive. And so they do all that, you know, the high end stuff. And then uh -huh. we would review those and then, you know, we would come to some agreement, approve the, yeah, approve the plan and so forth. Some budget. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's too. pretty fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's cool so. stuff. Yeah, yeah. So surfboards, uh, at least during paddling speeds, are, I would consider, displacement or semi-displaced vessels. Yep. And then they get up to planing speed. Yep, absolutely. Um, kind of like, I mean, we were talking earlier how you water ski a lot. Mm -hmm. Water skiing is a great example of going from displacement to planing. Absolutely. And it takes a lot of energy to get out. It's such a small... And, the, and you know, that bow, uh, the bow comes up as you gun it. The bow comes up to climb over that bow yeah. wave, and then you come up on top. Well, and that's the boat, but I'm talking about the skier. The skier does the, the same thing. The skier does the same thing. They're <laughs> submerged. There's I remember you're like, keep the tip up, keep the tip up. And it's like, <laughs> I'm keeping the tip up. And then it was like, and yeah. you're plowing. And then all of a sudden, yeah, it gets out of that hole, right? A and lot it, of and energy. It, and it transfers from displacement to planing. Yeah. Um, a lot of energy there, yeah. So... Keeping that in mind, because surfboards have a different goal. We're not, they are carrying cargo, I suppose, but the cargo is controlling the board. Yeah. Um, its goal is actually to turn. Surfboards yeah. are meant to turn, kind of yeah. like a ski, yeah. a water ski would. So what would be, what kinds of features would you, if you were to shape a surfboard, what kind of features would, would be the first things you'd consider? <laughs> That's not a fair question. It, it totally is a fair question. <laughs> it's just a vessel. Well, <laughs> so it's going to be the old compromise, right? In the old design spiral. You're yeah. going to try something, but I mean, you need something that's got to have enough buoyancy. Yeah. And you're going to have to be able to get up on top of the water. And you're going to have to be able to turn. You can't just keep going straight. That's right. not going to work. Right. So you're going to need a shape that's got enough volume for the weight of the of the surfer that's a big issue in today's surfboard making they've yeah. actually incorporated volume as a dimension now. Mm -hmm. and now it's the weight to volume ratio that that surfers and it depends on their skill level as well because you can yeah. have a great surfboard that paddles that has really really high volume for paddling but then once you get up to planing speed now you can't turn the darn thing right because you right can't that. roll it on rail you can't pivot it that sort of thing. Well, if you have and if you have a long board to get more buoyancy volume, it's going to have a lot more moment of inertia when you try to turn the board. Yes. The board's not going to want to turn as yeah. nearly as much as a short board. Yeah. 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 So you're yeah. saying buoyancy. So uh, buoyancy. Uh, ability to turn. Ability to turn. And then you, you said would, that you would the probably. third thing you said that I found really interesting was it needed to get out of the water. Yeah. And fast. And it's that lift principle yeah. in that front part of the board that yeah. is actually shapers consciously design that in mm -hmm. because it's just like what we've been saying. It's the skier getting out of the water. It's yeah. The, yeah. the boat getting from displacement to planing. It's that one moment. And is I've always wondered about this is, is like what sort of design, because that is in the first <laughs> Third first of third board. of the board, yeah. At some point, it's going to have to provide that lift to get the, the rest of the board and body out yeah. of the water. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it seems to me that's kind of a tricky design issue because if if the board is very flat and with just a little bit of bow rise, call it, yeah. uh, that might work fine for a very long, easy wave. Yeah. Or a kind of wave where you, you don't, you know, you're not going to catch that front part of the board. Right. 
but it may not work so good if you're up like this and you're bow it's the, a steep wave yeah so if it's a steep wave you put the nose in you're done so then you need much more. Yeah, so they call that rocker in surfboard yeah, design, the front right. rocker. So um, yeah, yeah, yeah. in steeper waves, they have more rocker, <coughs> but that the rocker sense. slows them down in flatter water. Yep. So in paddling and in flatter yep. waves, the rocker slows them down. And so they have a, now that now we're getting into why surfers have quivers. Yeah, have you need a, a van variety, full of boards. We have a van full of boards. <laughs> we show up to the beach. <laughs> And we have sta ah, stacks of boards, there you and we go. look at the waves, how are they ah, going to look? Okay. And then we pull out the, what we think is the correct. Can you imagine if you had just a, a quiver of boats? You're like, hmm, yeah. the water's looking kind of rough today. I'm going to take this one that cuts through yeah. water. Yeah. <laughs> well, you do that with uh, small sailboats, right? With the windsurfers, or different, they have different rigs and even That's different, right. different boards, yeah, yeah. For the, depending on the conditions. Or even different sails, but sails different have sails, more yeah. to do with propulsion changes than... Yeah design yeah 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 yeah. that's interesting well, what do you think of the uh, wing wing foils nowadays we have one right over here in this lagoon really yeah does it, he have a big wing that he's holding on to or is no. it um, oh electric i thought foil? I th no i thought you meant the underwater foil well, yeah, it's a little bit of both so yeah. they have the wing surfing which is the wing and they could be on a sup or a foil you're talking about the electric foil electric foils yeah, yeah you got one here uh-huh you got one here he zips around yeah he zips around <laughs> looks like fun yeah. <laughs> now they, they talk about no drag. No drag, and we've seen them in, in Hawaii too, with yeah. uh, going out, and that's that's pretty pretty well, interesting this one has, technology. Yeah. This one has a propeller. Yeah, has a propeller down on the foil. Yeah. Possibly the ones you saw in Hawaii. Same. They did they? You did see yeah. them. Well, did I've you ever them see them wave um, without one? Like they're just paddling along, or they're they're on the wave already? Yes. Yeah. I've seen them. Yeah. So those pretty are just foils. Yeah. yeah, and you know they're doing a lot more of that with sailing now. Yeah, I last America's that. Cup was uh, on foiled boats. Yeah. And there's com commercial boats you can buy, commercial sailboats you can buy now that are foiled. Yeah. And and they have small boats that small sailboats that are foiled as well. So there's the there's the one class called the Moths. Yeah, the Moth. Yeah. Yeah, that well, they're crazy. crazy. They, they're uh, very much a development class, so they're always trying to fine tune it and get better and better and better. So they're yeah. holding on to you know it's one uh, it's one sailor. They've got One the main other. sheet, the rudder, and the foil they're having to manage Control. all at once. Yeah, yeah. With a little yeah, that's right. It's on, off on the, the tiller. On the tiller, yeah, they can the adjust the, the, the foil. foil angle. Or yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty interesting. Yeah, I'd crash yeah, that yeah. boat in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it would, be, it would be fun to try one. but uh, It would be. Do yeah, you think yeah. it would work out here with the gusts? Uh, a lot of gusts. I've seen one out here actually really? i mean i've seen yeah uh, uh well no i've not a moth but i've seen a, a kite for uh no oh, windsurfer with a foil with the foil yeah windsurfer yeah, with I the foil i see that he sailed back and forth yeah. the challenge here is it's really gusty yeah. you, it's it's hard to do in a gusty environment. well and those are hard to control in general yeah, yeah, yeah one yeah. behind the boat and it was fun until it wasn't fun anymore. Like <laughs> that's got to be a lot of work. As soon as as soon as you feel like you've got it behind the boat, yeah. Immediately it's like boom, something changes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, in the yeah. Water. yeah. I'll show you that uh, video some other time. Yeah. Okay. That <laughs> sounds like fun. No, that, that's pretty cool stuff. I think it's time for you to start shaping because you got all the principles right. I might, have, I might have an idea of the principles, but I have no experience. There's <laughs> <laughs> one more thing to add to your retirement. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That's all I got for you. Thanks. Okay. Thanks no. for coming on. Happy, happy to do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome.